Thank you for joining us this evening. For those of you who are new, my name is Denise Smalls and my coworker, Latricia Holt is on here as well. If you have any questions as we go along, please feel free to put them in the Q&A and we will get started. We were just waiting to get some more people on the webinar, but thank you for your patience and thank you for spending your evening with us tonight. So marketing your transferable skills. Before we get started with our wonderful presenter, I just wanna go over some housekeeping rules here. Um, you are currently muted and your video is turned off. The webinar will be recorded. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A feature and all questions will be answered after the, the webinar. But please put your questions as we go along in that Q&A feature. Once the guest speaker is finished, there will be a post test link. So when you registered, which we appreciate your registration, when you registered, you answered some questions. We appreciate you answering all of those questions for us. And what we will do is I will put a, a link in the chat feature once the presenter is finished. And you will just need to click on that link, place your name, and then um, answer the same questions. It's the same questions that you answered when you registered. However, the difference will be is that now you have all of the answers because our wonderful presenter will provide you with all of those answers to those questions. And so we had a pre-test and now we just have that post-test assessment. So again, if you could just put your full name when I put that link in and your um, just answers, just multiple choice, seven questions, hit submit. And then we will then do a raffle for a drawing. We give out gift cards and we have a raffle drawing. So please don't leave once the presenter is finished. Please ask all of the questions that you have to her. She is an awesome source for um, HR and all of the um, aspects of resumes and interviewing and um, these tonight is transferable skills. So she has a lot of experience. So please ask all the questions. And then we just want you to know that we collect and maintain your registration information and we will use it just to communicate about future webinars. Also wanna just tell you a little bit about us for those of you who don't know, those of you who came on late. Again, my name is Denise Smalls and me and my coworker, works with the um in the Westlake's Financial Wellbeing Center and we provide free services to the community financial services so we do financial counseling we do financial webinars like these so we have a, a number of financial webinars coming up there is a survey after the webinar so if there is a, a webinar that you would like to see in terms of finance, please put that in our survey and let us know that. We, we, we help with job placement, we have careers resources and community resources. So my coworker's name and our telephone number for the Financial Wellbeing Center is there on the screen. So please feel free to um, take that number down and give us a call about anything related to finance. We would love to hear from you. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And Rhonda, you raise your hand. If you have a question, you could either put it in the Q and A or put something in the chat before I put it, I give it over to Stephanie. Okay, your hand is down. So I am gonna assume that you're okay. If not, again, put something in the chat or in the Q&A and either I or Latricia will answer you. So 
So just want to tell you about our presenter. Our presenter is Stephanie Edwards. She has 20 years of experience. Thank you, Rhonda. And HR operations, recruiting, training, change management, strategy, corporate culture, coaching, and leadership development and earned a master's in human resources at Rollins College in Winter Park in 2012. I told you, she knows a lot about HR. So this is the person that you need to definitely ask all of these questions that you don't feel comfortable asking your own HR about. She has a demonstrated track record of success in creating and delivering programs mm -hmm. that enables organizations to translate business goals into people's strategies and tactics. Stephanie is dedicated, passionate, and persistent, and strives to bring the best of herself to every interaction, task, or assignment every day. She believes that the most important role she has is to be a coach and mentor to others on their journey to realize their personal and professional dreams. So with that, I am going to pass the baton over to Stephanie and let her get started. And thank you again for joining us this evening. Thank you, Denise. Well, welcome everyone. I'm gonna start sharing my screen. And we will jump into our content for tonight. So for those of you that are returning and attended the first session, welcome back and um, happy to have you. And for those of you that this is your first session, we're excited to have you on as well this evening. Um, I'm really excited to be able to present to you tonight the second of our four-part series, which is on marketing your transferable skills. And the things that we are going to discuss tonight, my PowerPoint advance. Um, here's what we're going to we're going to talk about. So the first thing that we're going to do is just a broad overview of the different types of skills that potential employers look for in a candidate. Then we are going to take a little bit of a dive into identifying specifically what skills you have acquired through your experiences at work, through volunteering, maybe at your church or school, and basically just in life, when you know the things that you do every day, you're acquiring and using different skills. And so you want to be able to take an inventory of that and say, what are these skills that I have and how might they apply to a job that I'm seeking? Um, and then lastly, and, and probably most importantly, we'll cover off the ways that you can articulate your skills to potential employers. Um, and then I'm going to end with an example. So you can see how, for those of you that are maybe looking into a completely different um, job than what you do today, I'm going to take you through an example on how you can articulate your skills and still have them be um, applicable to a job in a new industry that you might be seeking. So let's start with the types of skills and just providing you with a couple definitions on the different types of skills um, and as this will help set the foundation and the tone for the rest of our time this evening. So let's start with hard skills. And the hard skills are really technical knowledge or training that you've gained. These are concrete skills that you've acquired through different life experiences. And in many cases, it could be something that you've learned from an on-the-job experience or from some kind of training or educational experience that you've had. And so as you see the things that I've listed off to the right, it's knowing multiple languages, having technical acumen in um, different software programs, maybe having um, been trained to be a mechanic, so you have mechanical skills, or you have computer equipment skills, or maybe you're, you are trained in how to prepare um, HVAC. Um, so there's a lot of things that can be kind of, those are the hard skills, right? And depending it's certainly hard skills can be important, especially if, if it's more of a trade kind of position, right? So that's your hard skills. So now let's talk a little bit about the soft skills. 
And what your soft skills are, are a set of skills that essentially are kind of personal habits and traits that shape how you work um, on your own or with others. These are the skills that um, employers look at and say, this would make someone a good employee or a good member of a team. And they really highlight these are really important to highlight because again, these are the ones that you're going to see peppered throughout job descriptions for roles that you might be applying for. And it's things, as you can see to the right, like dependability, communication, teamwork, problem solving, adaptability, um, organizational skills. These are the things that you will commonly see in a lot of different um, areas when you are looking at job descriptions for a role that you're interested in applying for. And now let's talk about transferable skills. So transferable skills are really these skills that can be transferred from one job to another. And they're qualities that essentially carry over from different roles as they're useful regardless of the role and regardless of the industry. Now, most transferable skills, as you can probably assume, are more of the soft skills. Um, but there are some hard skills that can also be classified as transferable. And the best example that I have of that would be technical lit literacy. So if you have technical acumen, um, you know, a, and a potential employer can pretty much deduce that if you have technical skills and you have the ability to different technical programs, then you've got a proficiency in that area. You would be able to transfer the learning or the skills that you have from one technical program to then have an ability to learn another technical program because you're comfortable working in that Transferable skills are really important to highlight, again, especially if you're looking um, and wanting to change career paths because you don't have experience necessarily in that specific job, but you do have a lot of skills that can transfer. Um, and that's where you'll want to start highlighting those even more in your resume and also, of course, in the interview process once you get there. And just to start with an example. Let's say that you've been a teacher for several years and you want to move industries. There are skills that you have learned by being a teacher that would directly apply to another career. Think about things like organizational skills, coaching skills, leader um, management skills, leadership skills. These are all things that you do every day as a teacher that absolutely would be applicable to many other jobs and many other industries. And we'll carry that teacher example throughout towards the end of our session today. And you, you'll see how it kind of can play out, how you can really highlight those skills and make it very relevant and applicable to a completely different role. This thing that you see here are just very common transferable skills, again, that you would see on a lot of different job descriptions out there. It's things like leadership, professionalism, teamwork, customer service, flexibility, adaptability. These are all things that you would commonly see in job descriptions. Now, I took it a step further and did a little research on really what the top five transferable skills are that employers are looking for. And that's what you see listed here. So you'll see at the top, there is a header, right? You've got communication, analytical, management, leadership, technical. And then below that, I've broken down into some specific examples of what is encompassed within those broader um, <clears throat> skill examples. So let's start with communication skills, right? When you think about communication, the first and most obvious are written and verbal communication, but there's other things that are layered in and apply to your ability to be a good communicator. Do you have experience facilitating things? Um, listening skills are a very, very important part of communication. Being able to build relationships so those are some good examples of com communication skills that employers look for. Now let's talk a little bit about analytical skills. So when you think about analytical skills, obviously strategic thinking, critical thinking comes to mind, but also things like decision making, troubleshooting, um, forecasting the business or forecasting, you know, you know, problems that might occur and how you can maneuver that. 
Uh, the next one is management. And there's tons of things that you can manage, right? You can manage people, you can manage projects, you can manage time, you can manage accounts. Um, but then there's also things like planning, um, being a committed worker and having commitment to the work that you're doing, um, having reliability. Next is leadership. And it and you don't have to necessarily lead people to be a leader. Um, there's tons of ways that you can show leadership skills that you see listed here, like being inspirational, being motivational, collaborating, um, being able to um, execute conflict resolution, influencing, coaching, mentoring. So tons of different ways that you can execute those. And then last would be, again, as I mentioned, while technical is, techni is more of a hard skill, it's certainly also one that is an important transferable skill, especially in this day and age right, where everything that we do is typically somewhat technically based, whether it's needing to know the office suite programs because you need to use, you know, email and design, pro, you know, maybe create PowerPoints like I have um, or answer, um, you know, use Word, Microsoft Word for something. There's also social media, right, depending on the role in the job, um, having, you know, the acumen to navigate and utilize social media um, in your role. A lot of companies are doing, you know, all of their marketing through social media. Um, different operating systems, again, as I mentioned, any kind of equipment um, or mechanical skills, and then even graphic design, right? Like um, if you have uh, a comfort level and a skill set where you've learned how to be uh, create graphics and animation or something of that nature, that would also be something that's tremendously transferable depending on the um, job that you're looking for. So I want you to keep these skills in mind, these top five. And as you review this list, what I want you to also think about are the experiences that you have had at school, at work, at church, um, as you've participated in volunteerism events, um, and really start thinking about taking an inventory of those skills that you have. And you're going to want to make a list. That's one of my calls to actions for each of you when you leave our session today, is that you go back and you reference these skills and you think about the things that you have um, and really be able to take an inventory of the ones that you can apply, because then it's going to be important for you to take the next step and highlight that in your resume, as well as in um, your interview prep, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So now that we understand what the different types of skills are, now we're going to talk a little bit about how you can showcase those transferable skills um, and, and, and the ways that you can really uh, provide a, a very clear picture to a potential employer on how you've brought those skills to life. So first, let's start with just thinking about the keywords from a job description. So for those of you that were on the first webinar, um, where we talked about um, making sure that you've reviewed a job description for the job that you're seeking and looking at the responsibilities section of the, uh, the job description, as well as the knowledge and skills section and look for those keywords, right? Those keywords that I was referring to are the transferable skills. It's things that you can see embedded not only in this resume or in this job description, but also um, in any job description, right? It's the things that you're seeing here that are kind of popping up in the boxes. Image, organize, reporting, coordinate, collaborate, project management, communication skills. These are the things that you really wanna be able to showcase that um, if you're looking for a project manager position, that you have these skills, right? And there's many, many more. And again, all of them are typically embedded in that list that I just shared with you. Once you know what the skills are and you've identified the transferable skills in the job description and the skills section, then you're gonna to need to communicate how you have those skills and which ones are a match for you. And there's two ways that you can do that. The first way 
is obviously through your resume. So when you think about your summary and your professional um, experience sections of your resumes, this is the best opportunity that you're going to have to look at all those skills that you know you have and then be able to describe those skills. And the more of them that you have, the better. It is absolutely a great way for you to really um, showcase to a potential employer how you would be the best fit for this role on paper because you have all of these skills that match what they're looking for in their job description. In addition to that, what I'll tell you is that it's really important for you to try to quantify how. So you can see the couple examples that I've provided. You know, I could have just said managed a team. Okay, well, that shows that I have people management skills. But take it a step further and really quantify. I managed a team of five leaders. So not only is that communicating to a potential employer in my resume that I've managed a team, but I've now told them how many the word leaders, which typically means I've managed people that also scope. Let's take a look at the second one. Again, let a project to improve employee retention that required me to create an action plan, communicate goals and tactics um, to office leaders and to follow up on the execution of the plan. So I could have just said that I've led projects, right? But instead I gave the full scope of what I did as a project manager. Um, so you can help again, paint that picture for a potential employer. What, one of the things that I mentioned on the first uh, webinar as well is that, you know, your resume is kind of the gate Hello, everyone. Um, seemed like we lost Stephanie for a minute. So, um, Ruben, I see that you had a couple of items in the chat um, talking about how you're using your transferable skills in the different um, areas that you work in. So that's awesome. And um, that's great that you can see that you're using those transferable skills. So that is great. Thank you so much for putting Activity. that out there. Activity. Hello, Stephanie? I'm back. Okay, we lost you for a sec. So I just popped in. Yeah. Yes, uh, my apologies. I'm clearly having a little bit of internet uh, opportunities this evening, though. Okay, so wh where did we, where did you lose talking about the uh, how communicating through the resume? Yes, I think you was on you you said you talked about the first one, and I think you was about to start with the second one. Okay, perfect, excellent. Okay, so. What I was beginning to say before I lost everyone was that when um, what I talked about first webinar was that like your resume is is your first gate in right and in many cases you've got a computer that's actually reviewing your resume and will either decide whether or not you are a good fit to move forward in the process. And so the more of these transferable skills that you can highlight in your resume that are matches to the job description, that's going to increase your probability of having the opportunity to move forward in the process and actually get that interview. And once you get the interview, then it's going to be really important for you to articulate to the person that you're interviewing with 
through different examples and narratives that you have created using this STAR method. And I'm going to talk a lot more about the STAR method in the next webinar, but I thought I'd give you a teaser on it today. Um, and this is really where you're looking at an example of a situation. Then you're going to talk about the task and the actions that you personally took in order to address the situation that was being experienced. And then lastly, you're going to wrap it up with the results that you achieved as a result of your tasks and actions that you took. And these, again, are called success stories. And it's really important that you have plenty of these created that enable you to really highlight those transferable skills. Because that's where you're going to build confidence in an employer that if I was a teacher, and now I want to become a project manager. Well, I'm, I don't necessarily have traditional project management experience, but I can showcase to you through really tangible examples using this STAR method as I talk to you on all the steps that I took that can absolutely apply and be relevant to that project manager job. That's so, We are no longer seeing the PowerPoint. Should we be seeing that? Yep, you should. We just see your beautiful face. Okay, let's see here. How do I get back to sharing my screen? Because it really kicked me out, didn't it? Okay. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Excellent. All right, so that's the STAR method that I was mentioning and referring to. So now let's talk about example, real life example. So let's imagine that you're a teacher. That's the kind of the example that I've been using throughout our time this evening so far. And what I'd like to do is just walk you through kind of how you can take transferable skills that you've gained in one role and apply it to a different one. So you now want to become a project manager and that's what you're looking for. So what I'm gonna do is kind of walk you through how you can take a look at those transferable skills that you have that apply to a project manager role and then articulate them through your, job, uh, your resume that gets you that opportunity to potentially get a conversation. So the first thing that I did was I wanted to just showcase all the top skills that are required of a teacher and a project manager. And as you're looking through this list, what you're going to very quickly see is there, there is a tremendous amount of overlap. And specifically, if you look at maybe those like first 10 skills on each list, they are directly aligned with each other from a role perspective, right? So communication, leadership, organization, teamwork, all of those things are the exact skills that are also required of a project manager. Now, as you get further down the list, there, are, there become some differentiators, but the good news for you, right, as someone who wants to become a project manager, you now have confidence that you've got a lot of skills that are directly relevant and applicable to that project manager position. So now let's talk about and break it down using each one of those five key strength transferable skills. I'm going to focus on four of the five, actually. So let's start with communication. Now, obviously, if you're a teacher, communication is a tremendously large part of your role, right? You are communicating every day with students, with parents, with faculty members. And so it's a big part of what you do, right? And so when you think about how you would articulate that through your job experiences, let's talk about a few ways that you can showcase that. First, deliver lectures to students of fifth to first grades, ensuring understandable and relevant language and materials. Next, so, so that's really going to showcase, obviously, your facilitation skills, as well as your written and verbal communication skills. Now let's uh, take a look at the second one. Communicated with parents, keeping them up to date with the progress of their children. So it's showing your interpersonal skills. Possibly I could deduce that that's relationship building as well because you're building relationships with the parents, um, as well as obviously written and verbal communication. 
Then last, shared useful materials with the co with colleagues by means of handbooks, master classes, and interpersonal communication. So this is another way that you're able to showcase um, some of your, again, interpersonal relationship building skills that you have and that you bring to the table. So that's communication. Now let's take a look at management skills. Again, as a teacher, you are managing a lot of things. You're managing your classroom. You're managing all of the students in your classroom. You might take a leadership role and partnering with your peers on some special projects. Um, or you also could be managing special events like a parent teacher night or field trips. There's all kinds of things that can go into management um, as it relates to being a teacher. So here's some of the ways that you could articulate it and how it would relate back to those transferable skills. Manage a class of 20 students. Notice I put the number in there because it's always good to have very quantifiable ways that you've managed, assigned homework and research projects, and regularly assessed performance. So this is showing time management because you're saying you've regularly, you're regularly assessing. Um, you've obviously got people management um, and project management. Um, it's showing commitment. Um, Again, that word regularly helps show commitment. Um, next one is collaborated with colleagues to schedule lessons in classrooms. So when I look at this, this shows a, a couple different things, right? It could be delegation because you might be delegating to your colleagues. Um, it also shows um, your ability to kind of manage people as well. Next would be um, organized educational and entertaining events for pupils and parents. So again, this is talking about potentially project management, um, time management, commitment, action planning. So all of those are ways that you can showcase those management skills. Now let's talk a little bit about leadership skills. Again, there are a number of behaviors that teachers engage in every day that show leadership skills. They motivate students to perform. They deal with conflict in the classroom. They're obviously teaching, training, mentoring, coaching. So here's some you can articulate that. Help students to discover and develop their natural abilities. So this obviously is motivation. It's influencing, mentoring, and coaching. Next, motivated colleagues to develop their skills, initiated professional meetings to exchange experiences. So this is also, to, this showcases collaboration. It showcases influencing, mentoring, and coaching as well. Also, obviously, motivation. And then lastly, um, onboarded new teachers providing them with advice and mentorship. So mentorship is obvious. Um, teaching and training is, is another one. If you're onboarding people, you're teaching them. Um, and you're prob probably also creating some influencing and team building as well as you are partnering with these new folks that are joining the school. So that shows leadership. Now let's talk a little bit about technical. So there's obviously ways that teachers are, um, you know, showing technical acumen. They're creating lesson plans and materials, most probably using Microsoft Office Suite or other um, maybe offline programs. They are using different tools to help them proof and grade students' work. Um, most schools now have their own um, web portal where teachers have to upload information so the parents can check on their their. Their, their child's progress. Um, and then think about the last 12 months, right? Teachers were thrust into this environment where they were then having to learn how to manage live online learning for their students. So lots of ways that teachers show technical acumen. So here's a few examples of how you could they could articulate that in their resume. Used online and offline spell checking and grammar correction tools to proofread and edit students' assignments. Created presentations with PowerPoint and other online and offline applications. Proficiently used web search opportunities to prepare the materials and upcoming lessons. And lastly, managed online video conferencing platforms to effectively deliver uh, online classes. 
So all great ways that uh, a teacher can showcase those technical skills that they bring to the table. So what I'd like to do now is quickly recap kind of what we've, we've discussed as it relates to your transferable skills. You know, as I mentioned in the beginning, um, employers, you know, will hire and they look at candidates that don't have direct experience in the industry. And um, because, again, you have, they have an expectation that they're going to have skills that are transferable to the, the new role that they're pursuing. But that doesn't come without risk, right? Typically, the least risk averse uh, approach would be to hire somebody. If I'm looking for a teacher, I'm going to hire somebody that was a teacher before. If I'm looking for a project manager, I'm going to hire somebody that's a pro been a project manager before. You are the way to bridge that. And it's through your ability to showcase your transferable skills, and really communicate specifically how you have executed and delivered those transferable skills. Um, and that's how you minimize the risk and build confidence that you have a skills transfer. And you, as I mentioned, it's really important that you know the job description, that you have matched your transferable skills to the information on the job description and showcase them using those examples in your resume and in the conversations once you have the opportunity to interview. This is going to enable you to show to the potential employer that you absolutely have the skill that you claim you have, that you understand how the skill is used to the new industry or the role, and that you can show how you would apply that skill to the new industry or the role. So the next thing that I have for you is really some calls to action. And this is going to be very helpful in the next webinar, which is all going to be focused on interviewing. And basically, what you will want to do is ensure that you have reviewed the list of top five transferables after the webinar is completed. And then next, I want you to make a list of all the skills that you possess from that one slide. And then write a brief statement for each skill, how you have displayed that skill. And that's going to be really, uh, it's going to make the conversation more robust and help you create, connect a lot of dots if you plan to attend the interviewing session, which is definitely going to help you really get your behavioral um, stories down, your success stories down, and really um, be able to articulate to potential employers what you bring to the table. And with that... I'm going to leave you with this. I believe that your skills are your superpowers. And these superpowers are gonna enable you to realize and make you the hero of your story. So it's really important that you know them and that you write that story in a way that's gonna create a ton of confidence for, for potential employers and allow you to land that role that you seek. And that is our presentation for this evening. That wraps up our time tonight on transferable skills.